Okay guys, this video is going to be mainly for those people that have an iPhone 12 Pro and are possibly thinking about upgrading to the iPhone 14 Pro. I have the Pro Max, but for the Pro and the Pro Max, they are pretty much exactly the same other than the size and the battery life. I'm gonna be covering a whole host of different feature upgrades and some of the specifications that you do get with the 14 Pro that you don't get with the iPhone 12 Pro. So let's go ahead and see if it's actually worth spending the extra money to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro. And let's get straight into it. So first, let's talk about the display. With the iPhone 14 Pro, it does have an upgrade to 120 hertz display, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro has 60 hertz display. That's very beneficial, especially when you're cycling through all of the different apps on your phone, maybe you're browsing some websites. I have actually noticed the speed and how quick some of the animations are when I am switching between apps. It just feels a lot more fluid when you do have that 120 hertz display. But basically in theory a higher refresh rate should equal a better quality picture because it cuts down on the blurriness one other thing that i've always been disappointed with iphones in general is the amount of peak brightness for their screens the iphone 14 pro now has a peak brightness of 2000 nits which i think is absolutely great the iphone 12 pro is 1200 nits so it is a lot significantly less and I'm just so happy that now when I'm outdoors and it's very sunny and the sun is directly hitting the screen, if I turn the brightness to the max level, I can see everything so much more clearer than I've ever had before with any iPhone. Of course, one of the biggest differences on the display itself is the always on display for the iPhone 14 Pro. You can see this is the lock screen. You can't have any always on display for the iPhone 12 Pro and you can customize this. So it dims the wallpaper that you've set. You can add little widgets, even though it's very limited at this stage, there's not too many widgets you can add. There's still a lot of customizations that you can make. If you hold down the lock screen, then you can go to customize. Outside of that, you can create as many lock screens as you like and you can switch between them however you want. So if I go and create a new lock screen, for example, I can maybe add one which is focused on the weather. So the background will show the weather of the day. Then you can add some more widgets. You can cycle through these. If I just keep them as it is, I hit add. I can set it both to the lock screen and the home screen as a pair. So I will do that there. So if I do select this lock screen, that will be now set on both my lock screen and my home screen. And if I wanted to switch it back, I just go back to the lock screen, I hold down and I cycle back to the one that I want. And that's the lock screen I have. The always on display I think is great. You know, when it dims and then you're not really using it, you can just use it as a clock. And this is something that I've always enjoyed using when I've had Android phones. And although it is quite basic still compared to Android phones, I'm just so happy that iPhone have actually introduced this now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about speed. The iPhone 12 Pro has the A14 Bionic chip and the iPhone 14 Pro has the A16 Bionic silicone chip, which is so much more faster and you do notice that when you are using the phone, generally on a day-to-day -day basis. And with the iPhone 12 Pro, you have four core graphics GPU, whereas on the iPhone 14 Pro, you have five core graphics GPU. Some other specs that you might want to know about is that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is at 5.0 Bluetooth capabilities, whereas the iPhone 14 Pro has been upgraded to Bluetooth 5.3. It just provides a little bit more technical and security enhancements and better stability when you do connect Bluetooth devices. In terms of the sensors inside of them, you've seen this from the keynote event. The iPhone 14 Pro has emergency SOS via satellite and also crash detection via the gyroscope inbuilt. The iPhone 12 Pro doesn't have that, but I'm confident that 99.9% .9 of you guys will probably never be in a situation where you will have to use either of those sensors. And finally, in terms of the design, the notch, you can see this one has the standard notch and the iPhone 14 Pro has the dynamic island notch, which I think is a very nice feature I'm excited to explore in more detail in the near future. And finally, let's compare the cameras. So with the main camera on the 12 Pro, it is a 12 megapixel f1.6 wide camera, whereas on the 14 Pro, it has been upgraded to 48 megapixel, which is a massive upgrade, especially if you are going to be shooting in Pro Raw. And that is on a f1.8 with quad pixel sensor, which is actually 65% larger than the 13 Pro. The main wide camera on the iPhone 14 Pro also doubles up 
as a macro photography camera. So when you zoom in close to an item, it will automatically bring up an option to go macro mode and you can actually get really good shots with that. And I will showcase some examples shortly. And with the telephoto lens on the 12 Pro, it has a 12 megapixel f2.0, 52 millimeter telephoto with two times optical zoom. And on the 14 Pro, it also has a 12 megapixel lens with f2.8 and a 77 millimeter telephoto lens, which is quite larger. And that goes up to three times optical zoom. With the ultra wide camera on the 12 Pro, you have a 12 megapixel f2.4, 13 millimeters with a 120 degree field of view. And likewise with the 14 Pro, it's also a 12 megapixel camera, slightly lower aperture at f2.2. It is also 13 millimeter and 120 degree field of view as well. The difference with the iPhone 14 Pro ultra wide lens is that this has dual pixel PDAF. PDAF is phase detection autofocus. And what that means is that every sensor inside that lens is used for accurate autofocusing, which provides much better clarity, sharpness, and light input, something that the iPhone 12 Pro ultra wide lens doesn't have. Now in terms of the optical image stabilization on the iPhone 12 Pro, it just has standard OIS built into it. And it does a pretty good job and it is very stable footage, especially if you shoot in ultra wide lens video. But with the iPhone 14 Pro, you guys may have seen, it also has this new sensor shift OIS, which they call the action mode. And I will be showcasing a side by side comparison to show the difference with and without the action mode, how stable that actually makes your video footage. With the front camera, the selfie cameras, both of them are 12 megapixels. The iPhone 12 Pro is f2.2. The 14 Pro is f1.9, both are 23 millimeter focal lengths. With the 14 Pro, this also has PDAF as well, which is phase detection autofocus, but it also now includes cinematic mode at 4K 30 frames per second, and I will be showcasing that in a second in some samples. One thing I also wanted to mention is with the iPhone 12 Pro, this has 1.0 micron pixels, which are generated by the CMOS image sensors. With the iPhone 14 Pro, that has been upgraded to have 1.4 micron pixels, which captures twice the amount of light per pixel in the sensor. So you get much better clarity in the front selfie camera pictures. So I will be showcasing some of these going next. So let's start off with the main camera and take a look at some of the side by side comparisons. So you guys can see how much of a difference they make. When you're taking photos with the main camera, looking at them on both phones side by side, you might not actually see much difference. It's only when you export them to your laptop and see them in full screen that you'll notice the photos are slightly more sharper and vibrant. With the ultra wide lens, it's sort of the same story, especially considering that they both have the same megapixels, focal lens and field of view. I wouldn't say there's anything in the ultra wide lens to be too excited about. In the telephoto shots, you'll notice that on the iPhone 14 Pro, the default aspect ratio of telephoto shots are more narrower and the color accuracy is more in line with reality in my opinion, like the green color of the grass. And in this next photo during sunset, you'll notice the dual pixel PDAF doing its work by bringing in more light and showing more detail in the fence in front of me. I've also included the 3x optical zoomed telephotos in each comparison, which is only available for the iPhone 14 Pro only, which in the last pick really shows the clarity that's maintained in the leaves of this tree. In my opinion, I think the portrait modes have had a really good improvement all the way from capturing the edges of the face and the body more accurately up to allowing more light to really highlight the subject in focus while still having a beautiful depth of field in the background. With the 3x portrait mode only on the iPhone 14 Pro, I could see professional photographers starting to get nearer to leaving their mirrorless cameras behind and I would say Apple have really come a long way in their portrait game.
Macro mode was first introduced on the 13 Pro models last year, and that's one more thing that the iPhone 12 Pro is unable to do. You simply get close to anything on the normal camera mode on One X, and it will detect the range and switch to macro mode, which you can also turn off if you wish. And the pic on the left here shows you the closest I could get without losing focus on my 12 Pro. And this second pic really says it all by making it clear that there's an insect on this plant, which my 12 Pro probably couldn't capture no matter how close I got. So let's move on to the video stabilization in this first test. I don't have the action mode on for the 14 Pro, so I wanted to see how well it stabilizes the footage in both phones whilst I'm just naturally walking here. Both still do an excellent job to be honest, with the tiniest bit of sway on the 12 Pro, which isn't too noticeable. Now as I turn around here, I'm going to start running and see how shaky or smooth the footage is. Even with the action mode off, the 14 Pro is super stable and you can see that the 12 Pro bounces a little bit here and there. So here's a repeat of that same test, but with the action mode now turned on for the 14 Pro and both videos set to 1x. Again, I'll start off by walking and this is where you'll notice it will really feel like the phone is on a gimbal. As I turn, I'll run again. This is really smooth and impressive. The final test I'm doing here is with the action mode on, but set to 0.5x for ultra wide because the 12 Pro ultra wide has very stable video itself, so I just wanted to compare both. As I'm walking, both feel like they are on gimbals and there's hardly any shaking. One thing to note, with the 14 Pro, as I start running here with this turn, the video on the phone whilst recording was shaking a lot, but once it's saved, it processes it incredibly smooth as you can see here. For me, that was very impressive. So guys, I've got the cinematic mode set to 4K at 30 frames per second, which is a new update for the cinematic mode on the iPhone 14 Pro. You don't generally need to have people in the background to do cinematic mode shots. Ideally, it's the best way to get cinematic footage, but I just wanted to showcase to you guys that I can actually do it with something else like this tree, for example. Right now, I've got it focused on myself, but I want you guys to judge, if you're just doing some filming in cinematic mode, this can actually kind of replace your DSLR or mirrorless cameras because you have this nice depth of field and bokeh effect in the background and you're just the subject in focus. And it just makes you take your smartphone to that higher level of professional videography. To do this cinematic mode with non-people in the background, like objects, for example, then you'll have to do it after you've taken the shot and edit it manually in your camera app. So let me go ahead and look at this tree. Now in the editing software, I'm going to make that tree in focus. So if I go back, this time you would have noticed the tree was in focus as I look back because I did manually select it when I did my editing. Now I just wanted to move on and show you some other cinematic shots with people in the background using both the back camera and also the front selfie camera which also has a big upgrade on the cinematic mode. Alright guys, so now I've switched over to the front selfie camera and this has cinematic mode in 4K as well. If you get someone in shot in the background, it automatically will pick them up as soon as you look at them. So now I'm gonna turn my head and try to see how the focus is, especially from the size of my face. You can see it's a little bit blurry around the ears, so it's not picture clear like it was on the back camera. 
but nonetheless it still does a very good job and here's an example how quick and smooth was that transition let's do it one more time cinematic mode you gotta love it so now to answer the final question is this iphone 14 pro worth upgrading from the iphone 12 pro based on my experience the past couple of days i would say yes definitely it is worth upgrading especially for content creators like myself who do use the camera quite often i feel like this is now going to replace me using my mirrorless camera in most scenarios especially when i go outdoors this just does a very good job filming in not just the normal camera mode but that cinematic mode they've just made so many enhancements on it that i feel like filming on there capturing good videos the portrait pictures are coming out much better the brightness on the screens the dynamic island a combination of all of the things that i've mentioned in this video it probably is worth upgrading for the majority of people that still have the iphone 12 pro in the uk the iphone 12 pro you can get that brand new roughly around 600 to 650 pounds with the iphone 12 pro with the iphone 14 pro that will cost around 1099 pounds or if you go for the pro max like myself that's 1199 so it is quite a little bit more expensive if you do go from pro to pro you're going to have to spend an additional 450 pounds especially if you are someone that doesn't have either of these phones and you want to decide between either getting this one or this one then that's something to bear in mind but overall i'm so happy that i did go ahead and upgrade and i don't have any faults at the moment with this and if i do find anything else which i think you guys would find very useful to know about i will be creating more videos of that so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those other iphone 14 pro videos that i have coming out very soon i'll also find some tips and tricks that will be quite useful for you guys not just to use the phone but also with the new features in the ios updates anything else you guys want to know as always drop a comment down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can Make sure to like this video and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.